Good afternoon. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. We are finally getting out in the shady place in the back of the, the yard. And we're gonna finally put in those plants that we grabbed from Bemis the other day. Let me show you what we got. Okay, so we have this beautiful fairy arch and we wanted climbers. So we got all this gorgeous ivy and we're gonna put it in on one side by the hops and just let it take over. And then, and then we got a whole bunch of uh, Lily of the Valley, which I'm hoping will spread. I'm looking forward to the way that spring is going to smell back here. So we've got some coleus set up. You can see behind us. Oh. What'd you get? Oh, garden spider. Come here, buddy. That'd be long legs. <laughs> no, it's on me. Hello. Oh, he just ran under me. Okay. okay. Spiders. Um, so we got this beautiful lily of the valley. We're going to put that in by the arch and just let it spread out. There's all kinds of um, little tiny miniature jack in the pulpits running around here. There are some yellow wide-throated flowers in bushes back here. It's pretty dappled. So we got mostly very shade tolerant plants, um, but the stuff that likes a little bit of sun will do well back here too. So let's get this stuff planted. I thought this was a few. Oh. It's one. Oh. How do we... Haha. <laughs> I'm... I'm gonna separate them just by wiggling them. There has been a lot of rain out here and these folks were out in the rain. Because they're nice and damp, they're easier to separate. And we are all in. We've got the climbers all set and hopefully they will climb. So we have some ivy left over and what we're gonna do is put it over by the big maple. Alan and Katie's wedding is next September. So I'm already trying some stuff out to fill in this spot. In spite of the bugs, I love this spot. It's under the big maple that we tapped for syrup last year. And I've got a little couch over here and I, I just I just love it. Anyway, um, when Alan and Katie did a walkthrough a few months ago, they decided that under this maple was where they wanted to have the ceremony. So I am doing my best to fill it up with the right aesthetic. It's a little gothy, it's a little fairy. Um, it's pretty awesome. So let me show you what I've got in and then we'll get this ivy in. Okay, so this is my experiment. I put in these coleus and they're doing really, really well. So the plan is that come the end of the season, I'll take some cuttings and we'll propagate them and we'll have many, many more. The oxaluses seem to be doing great, both varieties. So I'm going to get more of those and hopefully get big beautiful pots to put them in because it just won't overwinter. As soon as it starts to get really chilly, we'll bring this in. Um, so I wanna have a bunch of them in pots. And then we're gonna put in some ivy. This isn't the big maple. The big maple is over there. Hi, Joker. Um, but the little maple is where we're gonna put in that leftover ivy.
birds are at least hanging out together pretty well outside. You can see Cookie right over there. We do have a squirt gun ready in case there are any kerfluffles. And hopefully no one will fly into the garden today. I would really like that. And then there's my rooster. So this is the setup for Cookie. That's her little nesting place. And she's got her own food and water and grit. And everybody else over here has their own food, water and grit. And they're just separated by this door so everybody can see each other. This poor little chicken here got humped into submission. She got chased down and uh, stood on three times. The final time she ran into the bush and even when I tried to use the squirt gun near her to lure her out, she just stuck her head in the bottom and kind of gave up. She'll be okay. Yeah. Can you corroborate that story? You want to go back play with your friends? She doesn't. She's going to go back and play with her yeah, friends. She's gonna... Okay. Go on, girlfriend. I'll bring her over. Okay. This is all a fungus around here. Oh. Oh. Look at Cookie eating greens on her own. How awesome is that? She couldn't for a while there because her beak was still too messed up. So Cookie here did a pretty good job of socializing with her pals. It is the second night, the second day that she slept out in the coop overnight. So let's see if we can give her a few minutes in the coop with the other chickens and see how that goes. She did really well outside. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. We're gonna leave Cookie's crate open in case she needs some place to hide. All right, think good thoughts. Here we go. Okay. Right, let's see how we do. Right. Oh. Oh. It looks like Cookie has retreated into the crate, so we're going to keep the coop divided a little bit. Oh my goodness, look at this, it's a full-size large egg. Our girls are now pooping full-size breakfast. Do we have any grocery store eggs to com for comparison? We do. He's gonna get a grocery store egg. Let's look at these together. So this one is the, the grade A brown and this is ours, so. So we are uh, making, producing eggs larger than store-boughts. Look at that! Look at that primo egg! It is Thursday. Cookie came back to the coop on Saturday and she's had her own end for a little while. Liberty and I have been doing some, some big work on trying to reintegrate her. 
We've had everybody out in the yard together and they've been doing really, really great. Last night was interesting. When we came out to gather up the food and everything and get their water so we can clean it up, we found that Cookie had roosted on top of the door um, and we were like, what is going on? And everybody else had marched themselves to bed. So tonight we've got them all together in the run and what we're hoping is that everybody goes to bed in the coop together. So fingers crossed. We are hoping for the best. Everybody seems to be getting along. There's been a little bit of pecking order politics, but nothing too big. Cookie just walked herself right into the coop, right into the coop. She went past, she walked past Bitsy and Betsy right on in. I would say that's a really good sign, y'all. Okay, so it's just about sunset and we usually go out this time of night to just close up the coop and get the bowls and stuff. A few weeks ago, the birds learned to put themselves to bed at night. So they've been going in the coop and it's been pretty smooth. Cookie has been out there for the last couple of hours with the rest of the birds. And we're gonna see how it goes. Let's see if she put herself to bed with them. Sweet Cookie made it through the night with her buddies and is doing very well in the coop. So I'm going to come out and check on her in a few hours, but I'm feeling pretty confident that we're going to be okay. So, oh, Cookie. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. We go back and see your friends, have some breakfast. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. My good girl. I'm cautiously optimistic. I believe that we have reintegrated Cookie. I'm gonna keep a close eye on this coop all day long just to make sure there's no kerfluffles, um, no excessive cockadoodle dooting. But Cookie still has the crate at the end to hang out in if she feels uncomfortable or isn't ready to come out and play. Um, or if she needs some place just to retreat to. But I'm looking at her now and she is running around the run with everybody else, having some breakfast, eating up some scratch that I put down. So I'm feeling pretty optimistic. I'm gonna come out in a few hours and just keep checking on her every little bit. Um, so there we are. Thank you so much for hanging out with us during Cookie's Saga. And um, I'll keep you up to date. We'll catch you up soon. Take care. <laughs> <Whoop. laughs> you okay? Yeah, there's a carpet here. <laughs> I'm scared of the cat. That was amazing. She won't let me cam.